things. Girl. Do you think I should go for this one or this one? That one. This one? Yeah. What? Thanks. I am the mastermind behind all this and in this video I'm going to show you how you can be the mastermind as well and how you can fool yourself and your audience into thinking that there are actually clones. Hey everyone and welcome to another tutorial. Cat hair. If you're new here, my name is Ela. lovely to meet you and on this channel you will find video making and camera tutorials as well as occasional vlogs where we talk about things that matter in life. As you can tell from the beginning of the video, we are doing a clone tutorial. Previously I made a tutorial about how to create your own hologram in your video and this time we are going to clone ourselves and it's actually way easier than it looks. So let's not waste any more time, jump in Premiere and do this. The things that you'll need for this video are of course your clips and some sound effects if for example you're turning on the TV like I do in this video. As you can see I only imported one clip and that is because I filmed everything in one go. The reason why I filmed everything in one go is because I wanted to make sure that I didn't hit the camera or just accidentally moved it. Because as soon as you move the camera you'll have to align everything in post and sometimes it just doesn't work or you just have to spend so much time masking everything. So that is why I recorded everything in one go, which is something that I would recommend you to do as well. Another thing that I would recommend is to not waste any time, especially if you depend on daylight like I do, because the sun moves, or actually we move, but like because the sun moves, the daylight in your room changes as well. So make sure that you record everything in one go. I already selected the three bits that I want for this video. And as you can see, this is going to be like my base video. So this is going to be the foundation and we're going to put the other clips on top of it and mask those clips. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to place markers on each clip because I'm doing things in different clips and I want to make the interaction between the clones seem real. For example, at one point, one of the clones puts down a glass of water for me and I say thank you. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that, I've, that the clone puts down the glass of water and then after like a second or so I say thank you to make it look more realistic. We are going to create markers for every interaction or action that one of the clones takes. Alright, now that it is properly aligned it is time to mask it and in order to mask it we go to the effects control, we go to opacity and then we click on this little pen. One thing before we continue, make sure that you save your project the entire time. Masking can be a little bit difficult to handle for some computers, especially older computers. It also depends on how much masking you do and if you create a mask path and you change your mask every frame, what can happen is Premiere is not going to like it and it's going to crash every time. It happened to me actually, so that is why I'm telling you. Just be safe and save your project a lot. Also, if you have any issues with playing back your video while you're editing it, you can either go right here and change it to maybe 116, or what you can do is disable the other layers for the time being. When you click on the pen tool and you create your mask, now you see a few things. You see mask path, mask feather, mask opacity, and mask expansion. It is very important to use mask feather in order to remove any hard lines. Now, if you recorded everything in one go, like I did, you probably won't see any hard lines, but it's always better to use the feather and just feather it out a little bit. We are not going to touch mask opacity because we want the opacity to be 100 because it needs to be the exact same as our base clip. You can use mask expansion if you found out that you created a mask that's either too close to your subject or too far away. Lastly, the mask path is if, for example, you are moving around and you need the mask to move with you, that is when you want to use a mask path. Enable the keyframes by clicking on the clock so it turns blue. And then every time you change the mask, you will only change it for that frame. If you're not enabling mask path, every time that you change the mask, you will change the mask for the entire clip. So by enabling mask path, you will only change it for that particular frame. Before we move on to our second clone or our third clip, 
If you like this video and you want to see more tutorials like this, make sure to hit the subscribe bell and the notification bell. What? Hit no <laughs> hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you want to be notified and let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions for any cool tutorials that you would like to see. Now it is time to go to our second clip and this is me stepping out of my bedroom asking for advice. So here we do the exact same thing and for this one I'm just going to create a small mask. As you can see, it is really easy, but you have to plan your shot before shooting it. Because if you're not doing that, what can happen is that, in my case, I could be sitting up straight. And then when I come out of my bedroom, I would have to create points around my head and enable a mask path and then change it frame by frame by frame. And this is very time consuming and it's not gonna look that good. So therefore, make sure that you plan your shot before shooting it. Don't just start shooting it. That is fine, but it may happen that you end up regretting not thinking about this beforehand. As I just said, I created a small mask around the door, but I didn't take into account the shadows. So therefore, we're going to expand the mask a little bit, and also we are going to change the feather. And we're going to create a mask path for this one. All right, let's check if it's good now. As you probably noticed, my footage looks really flat and that is because I shoot everything in log. So right now I'm going to color correct and color grade the clips and I'll see you in a second. All right, the color correction and color grading is done and now it is time to add our sound effects. And in my case, I turn on or one of my clones turns on the TV. So I grabbed some audio, which I imported into Premiere and I'm going to put on the timeline right now. First thing that we're going to do is we are going to change the channel volume. In this case, my TV is on the right side, so I'm gonna make sure that the left side is completely muted. And then the right side, I'm just going to lower down to, I don't know, I just usually play with the numbers until I'm satisfied. All right, I'll leave it at 17. Now I'm going to add an effect called low pass and this just makes it sound a little bit more realistic. I don't really use a set number for this, I just do whatever sounds good to me. If you like this video and you want to see more videos like this, I mean you already know what to do and I already said this, but I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do it again. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell in case you want to be notified when these videos come out and we can see each other in the next video. I should go for this one or this one.